Hey everybody, my name is Mike Hagen with Visual Adventures. I wanna show you how I use Skyloom's Aurora HDR software in my normal workflow with Lightroom Classic CC. Let me show you how I integrate it with Classic CC and then give you a couple tips for setting it up and then I'll process a few images so you can see the results of their new 2019 version of the software. So here we go. First of all, uh, Aurora works as uh, a plugin, but it also works as a standalone software package. So if you open Aurora HDR 2019, you can actually open an image directly from here. You can also batch process an image, but that's not really how I work as a photographer. I work inside a Lightroom and I like to do, uh, I like to use Lightroom as my hub. So, you know, I do some pre-processing of imagery there and then I send it out into Aurora and use Aurora like a plugin. So that's what I want to show you first. In order to set up Aurora as a plugin though, you have to fire up the software package and then you go up into the Aurora 2019 menu. You do that pull down menu and you click install plugins. When you do that, the software then says, well, where do you want to install this? As you can see, I've already installed it as a plugin in Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom Classic CC. If I hadn't done that, then I could just click the install button here and here and it would do that. If you own Adobe Photoshop Elements, then you can install it there. And then Apple Aperture, you could install it there. Once you do, once you click install, you click done, and now you can close down the Aurora standalone app and you'll be able to use it inside of Lightroom. Let me show you how I use that in Lightroom. So, these images here, get rid of the green colored images and just show you the red ones. So this image here, here, and here, I took in a bracketed sequence. Now, as you, many of you know, HDR stands for high dynamic range. And the whole purpose of an HDR image is, uh, or the HDR process, I should, uh, should say, is to allow you to photograph a scene so that you maintain the highlights and the shadows in your final output. I use um, typically three to five brackets, uh, three to five bracketed images, and I bracket anywhere from about two stops, one to two stops between those images. It always depends on what the, the world looks like when I'm there on site. But this setup here, I've got, this one is at minus two, this one here is at zero, and then the bright one is at plus two. So I've selected those three images. I'm now going to right click, and I will choose export, and when I do, I go up here to the Aurora HDR 2019, and I have two options. One is to edit a copy of those images with my Lightroom adjustments. Sometimes I will do that. The other option is just to open the source files, basically the raw files that have been unprocessed. For this example, I'll just op open the source files. So I'll click that. Now comes or now opens up another uh, selection area inside of Aurora. It's asking me, uh, it's just confirming, are these the images that I want to use? And maybe I accidentally selected one more, or maybe I don't want all you know, seven images, maybe I only want five. Well, I can click the little X on each of these images to get rid of those as uh, options to process in the HDR program. One of the more important selections to make is this auto alignment. Uh, for this image set, I was hand holding my camera. I took these with my Nikon D850 and a 70 to 200 f2.8 lens, and I used uh, you know high high frame rate, and I went click click click. But there's always movement in the camera, so make sure that you choose auto alignment. There are a few other options here. One is uh, to turn on ghost reduction you know basically if a person is walking or if a bird is moving you'll get ghosting in between frames this will help you reduce that ghost that ghosting you've got the color denoising and that reduces noise of course and then you've got chromatic aberration over the years i've found that when you're when you're shooting bracketed images especially with the super wide angle lenses like the you know like the nikon 14 to 24 millimeter uh, you always get pretty dramatic chromatic aberration. So this selection will help reduce that. Um, so I'll turn that on just for the sake of this discussion. Now I'm going to click Create HDR. And as I do that, 
you'll see then that the Aurora program starts aligning the images and then it starts doing kind of an automated uh, intelligent HDR merge. So that process, that initial merging process took about maybe 30 seconds or so and uh, it was doing a lot of thinking and processing during that time. When it's done, it spits out this uh, basically a natural, I'll call it flavored or processed image. And I'm not gonna go into the details of Aurora HDR, the actual software package, because that's another video, how to use it. Uh, really today, I'm just showing how the, the software fits in my workflow. That said, I'm just gonna make a couple of quick changes. You know, I can, I can actually crop inside of this package. Um, I can rotate and get my horizon level. So I'll do that and click done up here. One of the neat things about Aurora is that it has these what I'll call thumbnails of different, different processing uh, methods. So we've got the natural processing method, vivid, detailed, bright sun, and then overall, it's just kind of has, has an overall adjustment from zero to 100. Zero means it's not applying any of the changes and 100 means it's applying all of the changes. And what do I mean by the changes? Well, I mean all of these sliders over here on the right side. So I generally like the natural look. Uh, my, uh, my bias is towards a less HDRE uh, type of a look. I like my stuff to look like it, was, like HDR wasn't used at all. So natural works well. I'm gonna go ahead and click apply. And when I do so, Aurora HDR then is applying all of these sliders at the overall level that I've chosen. And then it's gonna save it out as a TIFF. And there you hear the, compu the computer beep. So it creates a new TIFF. And there we go. I'll go full screen on that. And that's a nice looking image. And, you're com and if we compare that with maybe uh, there's the original, the original dark, the original middle, and the original bright. You compare the, the TIFF or the Aurora HDR TIFF, it's great. In fact, what I would say is it might even still be a little bit over the top. The colors are pretty saturated. I'm happy with how it brought out details from the shadows, but I think that overall the colors are a little saturated. I can still modify that in Lightroom. In fact, that's one of the points I wanted to make here is that Aurora HDR, when you, when you export it back out of Aurora and bring it into Lightroom, you still have a finishing process to go through in Lightroom. And that might include more or less saturation. It might include sharpening and maybe some noise reduction. Who knows? And it, you never really know until you process the image. But for this image, I'll go ahead and reduce some of the saturation right down here maybe just by minus five on there, maybe reduce vibrance a little bit to minus three, and I'll call that a day. That's how I use Aurora in my workflow. Thanks for watching, hope you have a great day.